for general health care for the lay person out there or people like myself who just bare bones? Is there two or three pieces of advice from a general health and nutritional standpoint that we can with confidence give to most, not all, most folks and say, you may want to do this, you may want to limit this or try this. So three good general health pieces of advice that we can give as NMSK practitioners or just the average folk that's listening to this. Yeah, actually, yeah, a couple things. One, water, water, more water, lots of water. <laughs> so, Jeffy. you know, being that we're made up of water and, you know, we're not born with a coffee deficiency or a Red Bull deficiency <laughs> or, you know, right, like any of those things. I find that most patients, no matter what realm we're seeing them in, just aren't getting enough water. So if we can start getting patients to drink water, and again, the water you put in your coffee is not water, it's just <laughs> water, right? So increasing water intake is probably a really safe recommendation for most patients. Number two, from a food standpoint, and this is going to be really easy because nobody has an hour to sit down with the patient, right, and dig through their diet, but here's just the general recommendations as I is I tell patients, if you can pull it off a tree, pull it off a vine, grow it in the ground, slaughter it. I know that sounds a little cruel, but that's that's our meat source. Poor fish We're in Texas. It. We're in Texas. There's a lot of that going on. Okay, fair enough. So it's okay there. Then it's food. If it has chemicals or words on the package you don't understand, or it has an expiration date of two years from today, it's manufactured product. It is not food. So if we can just teach patients to eat a little bit more of that, um, you know, protein sources, so our meat, our fish, our nuts, our seeds, our beans, our veggies, and our, our fruits, and we can eat more of our day in that realm, we're probably going to already make that shift away from manufactured product that's going to help us. It reduces inflammation. Again, it's going to feed, you know, through nutrients into the cells, and we're just going to overall feel better, you know, from that standpoint. So that would probably be my number two. My number three, and I'm, I'm giving you, I'm not even going the supplement realm, right? Because in case somebody's just not comfortable making those recommendations, I think the number three, if we really want to go over the top, is to ask some of our patients then to pull out some very specific food groups, even if they're not eating what I just described. And that would be sugar, probably gluten, and mostly dairy. And the mm -hmm. rationale behind those three food groups, and that's scary for a lot of people, is they just tend to be very inflammatory. So, you know, as a doc, if we've got patients that have a lot of injury, a lot of inflammation, a lot of pain, a lot of times by removing those food categories from the diet, they will tend to